بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموالاه أما بعد Tonight is the fifth night of Jumad al akhirah 1445, synchronizing with the 17th of December 2023. And we are on the seventh, 72nd episode from First Correction Aqidah. And we are continuing on to the people of Helfar. And today or tonight we'll be talking about the head of the people of Helfa, and that is Iblis. As we have talked last time, the wasail, the means by which we could really protect ourselves from the hypocrites. We talked about the mushrikeen, talked to kuffar, talked about the people of apostasy. We talked about lots of sorts of people who are going to go to the Helfa. But now, the one who is their imam, their leader, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told us a number of verses that this Iblis, he is going to be the person who's going to lead the people to the Helfa. So he had called them to the Helfa and they responded. Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, We have made them to be head of their peoples, imams, calling their people to the Helfa. And the imams of the all imams here, so from the imams, for example, Fir'aun, we have Qarun, we have Ubayy ibn Khalaf. Those are all a'imma, imams, not imams in the masjid, imam in the helfa, the lead people that are helfa. But the imams of the imams, and that is Iblis, قال, and we have made the curse to follow them in this dunya. As for the day of resurrection, هم من المقبوحين. They're going to be from the one who is going to be disgraced. So Iblis, he is their imam. He called them to the hell and he led them to the hell. Inna shaytana lakum adu fahdharuh. Shaytan is to be for you as an enemy. So be alert for from him and be on warn and guard against him. Liyakunu min ashab al-sa'ir. He is calling them to inna ma yad'u hizbahu. He called it to his people to go to the hellfire. Allah Azza wa Jal, he had, gave the tidings of Iblis to Iblis and all the followers of Iblis to the eternal hellfire. So he said, minha Get out of paradise. You're going to be disgraced. And Laman minhum, who follows you from these people, jahannama minkum ajma'in, I will fill up the hellfire from you altogether. Also Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, like the example of shaitan. If insani for when he said to the human being, to the man, disbelieve. Falamma kafar, when he disbelieved, qala inni bari I got nothing to do with you. He will dissociate himself in the hellfire from those who follow him. Inni I fear Allah, the Lord of Alameen, Lord of all that exists. So that at least he will testify to the monotheism in the hellfire. فَكَانَ عَاقِبَتَهُمَا أَنَّهُمَا فِي النَّارِ خَالِدَيْنِ فِيهَا That the punishment of both of them, the ones with the bliss and the ones who follow them, uh, they will be in the hellfire to abode there forever. وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الظَّالِمِينَ And this is the recompense and punishment of those who are ظَالِمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also he said, وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِلْغَاوِينَ And Jahim was being presented to those people who are deviant. وَقِدَ لَهُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ where, where is the thing that you've been worshipping beside Allah? Beside Allah. أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ هَلْ يَنْصُرُونَكُمْ أَوْ يَنْتَصِرُونَ Are they going to be helping you? Or are they going to help themselves? فَكُبْكِبُوا فِيهَا وَهُمْ وَالْغَاوُونَ فَكُبْكِبُوا فِيهَا هُمْ وَالْغَاوُونَ They were thrown on their faces in the hell themselves and the ones who follow them. They've been deceived. Zakhla. وجنود إبليس أجمعون and also the soldiers of of جنود إبليس the the soldiers of إبليس all of them together قالوا وهم فيها يختصمون they were in the hellfire they are disputing with each other تالله إن كنا لفي ضلال مبين we were in a main fest or a clear error إذ نسويكم برب العالمين we used to make you followers the ones we follow as to be like gods we make إبليس like gods because we follow their their commands 
And the ones who misguided us are the ones who are the criminals. We have no intercessors. We have no good companion. If we had another chance, we will be from the believers. There is an example and a sign in this and all of this. And most of them, they will not be believers. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He is the mighty and He is the oft merciful. So Iblis, may Allah curse him, is the one who had deceived uh, us and deceived all his followers. And he had beautified for them the sin. So that's why they fall into the sin, because they see there's nothing wrong with it. And they think that this is good. So until they had so many sins that would drop them into the hellfire. And this is the task of Iblis. And on the day of resurrection, he will dissociate himself from you in order to get more punishment. The dissociation from you doesn't going to make him to go to paradise. No, no. He's going to be in hell. But he's going to say to you, well, I, I've got nothing to do with you. I just called you and you follow. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, When the matter has been decreed and everything has been set, people to hell, to hell and people to paradise. Shaitan, what did he say? Allah gave you the right promise that if you go do good, you go to paradise. If you do bad, you go to hellfire. But I have given you a promise, but I let you down. I told you that if you do the sin, no problem. So you went to hellfire. If I said to you that don't do the good deeds, no problem. And you followed me as well. I had no power upon you. And so I called you and you have responded to my call. Don't blame me. Blame yourselves. I am not going to help you. And you're going to help me as well. That means you're going to be in the helper. I have disassociated myself and disbelieved in what you have made me as a partner with God. Because you've made me as equal to God because you are following my commands. So I've got nothing to do with your shirk. Uh, in the Zalimun, the oppressors will have a severe torture. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had rebuked the people of shaitan, rebuked the shaitan himself. Didn't I give you a word or a covenant on my word, O son of Adam? What is it? That is, do not worship the shaitan. He is the clear enemy to you. And then to worship me alone. This is the state of. He had misguided so many of you. Jibilla means a large magnitude of people. Haven't you got common sense? You have seen these people being misguided in the history. You have been, you have, you have been uh, listening to their stories. This is the hellfire that you've been promised. I told you, I threatened you. If you do like this, you're going to go to hellfire. Go to hell because of what you have disbelieved. So, Shaitan, he is, as I said, the Imam of his followers. And he will be doomed in hellfire. And the ones who follow him as well, he will be doomed in hellfire. He had called them to be from his party, from his soldiers, and you have followed them. So, have a warning. As a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to be from those people who are the Hizb al Shaytan and know that the people in all together are of two categories either Hezbollah or Hezb al Shaytan. There's no third, third party. It's either the followers of Shaytan or the followers of the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. So Hezbollah, they are going to be in paradise and they're going to be the, all the time Al Ghalibun, the one over, over the other ones, the supersedes, the victorious. As for the Hizb al Shaytan, they are the Khasirun, the losers. They're going to be going to hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, He who does follow Allah and put Allah his commander and his messenger to be his commander. And also the people who believe, Verily, the Hezbollah, the party of Allah, those are the ones that are going to be all the time غالبون. غالبون superseding, winning. Also another ayah called Allah in the Hezbollah Hum al Muflihun. So fa in the Hezbollah Hum al Ghalibun, Allah in the Hezbollah Hum al Muflihun. Those are the Hezbollah, uh, Hezbollah, not Hezbollah, the one in Lebanon, by the way. Hezbollah is the one who follows Allah Azza wa Jal. Hezbollah in Lebanon, this is Hezbollah, the followers of Allah, Wal Uzza, those false gods. 
Hezbollah humul fa inna ala inna Hezbollah humul muflihun. Those are the one who successful. So Hezbollah shaitan doom. Hezbollah they're going to be victorious. Allah Azza wa Jal in number of verses He had showed us that Hezbollah shaitan ala inna Hezbollah shaitani humul khasiru. They are the losers. Inna aladina yuhadun Allah wa Rasulah. Ulaika fil adalli. The ones who always goes up Allah and his, against Allah and His Messenger, those are the ones who are going to be humiliated. So in this ayat, which Allah talked about in Surah Al-Mujadala, or Al-Mujadila, that the hypocrites, they were, a'udhu billah, from the Hizb al-Shaytan. We talked about them in about three weeks ago, or four weeks ago, I think in two lectures. The hypocrites, they are from Hizb al-Shaytan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Alam tara illadina tawallaw qawman ghadib Allahu alayhim. But you see those people who had made their uh, people who to follow are the ones whom Allah has their wrath upon them. I mean, Christians and Jews. They have made all the kuffar, the mushrikeen, the idolaters, to be their leaders. <coughs> These are the hypocrites. That they are not from you and you are not from them. And they always make an oath upon the light while they know they are liars. Allah prepared for them a severe torment. For very woe to what they've been doing. It, they have taken their oath as to be a shield to protect them. Wallahi, we war with you. We wallahi, we don't want to harm you. They have hindered from the path of Allah. They will have a humiliating torture. That their wealth and their property, their children, they will not help them on the day of resurrection. And they will be the dwellers of the hellfire forever to dwell therein forever. When Allah will resurrect them like all of them. They will give an oath to Allah just like they used to give an oath for you. Then they're liars. And you think that they are upon something. They are the liars. Shaitan had overcome them, so it made them to forget the remembrance of Allah. Those are the party. Those are the followers of Shaitan. Those are the Hizb who are disgraced and doomed. So these ayah, these uh, verses talks about the hypocrites. They are from the followers of the shaitan and they're going to be from the losers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told us that the hypocrites, they are our enemies. They are the enemies. So be aware of them. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told us that the shaitan is our enemy. قال إن الشيطان الإنسان عدو مبين. Verily, شيطان is to be for the enemy for the human being is a clear enemy. So شيطان is the leader of the hypocrites, and also he's our enemy, just like the hypocrites are our enemies. So now, how can we just say that Hadi to understand this? I told him last time, Mister Iblis, and I'm sorry, really, just taking the any basically to make a joke of that person, but I shouldn't really done. Iblis, this, per, this, this, this name which is mentioned in the Quran, Billah, he is the leader of the jinn. Just like Adam is the origin of human being, Iblis is the origin of the jinn, the shayateen. Um, he is, may Allah curse him, is the worst enemy onto human being. Worse than kuffar, worse than mushriki, worse than idolaters, worse than atheists, worse than hypocrites. Because of the following reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Talking now about human beings, he said, always push the bad thing with one which is good. So if you heard something bad from this human being, always push with the good thing. So the one that you have an enemy, enmity with him, always make sure that you do as much as you can to make him to be one of the closest friends of yours. Then he said, وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا The ones who are patient, they were going to give him the right position. Jannah, وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ And the Jannah is always for the person who has a big portion from obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ But if shaitan whispers to you, فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Seek refuge in Allah, for he is the all-hearing, the all-knowledge. What do you understand from this? When it came to the human being, try your best to fix him. Make this enemy to be your friend. When it came to the shaitan, he didn't say, try your best with shaitan. He might be on your side. Try your best, he might be by your friend. No, it's Ta'id Billah. He's an enemy, always an enemy. 
seek refuge in Allah from him. Allah he said, Khudil Afu, wa amur bil urf. Always take the position of pardoning and always command to do the good. Wa a'rid anil jahilim and keep away from the ignorant. Wa imma yanzaghannaka shaytan wa nazgul. And if the shaytan gives you the nazgul, whisper him, fasta'id billah inna huwa sami'u al-alim. Then seek refuge in Allah. He is the one who is the all-hearing, the all-knowledgeable. So when it came to the shaytan, there is no such thing, you know, command the good, pardon, uh, keep away from the ignorant. He's an ignorant iblis, keep away from him. Oh, take him as an enemy. Allah he said, And push away the evil with the good one. We know what they say, these kuffar. But at the same time, I seek refuge in your law from the hamazat shaytan from the whispering of the shaytan. And I seek refuge in your law that they come. Because when they come, all evil. So when you seek refuge in Allah from the shaytan and for him to be present, you're seeking refuge from all types of evil. So those are the three ayat which I have mentioned just now from Surah Al-A'raf, from Surah Al-Mu'minun, from Surah Fussilat. Those are three ayats they have got يعني, a meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, the human being enemy, try your best to make him your friend. Try your best to call him to the haq. When it came to the shaytan, Allah commanded us to seek refuge in him from this jinn, from this shaytan, jinn, wal-iyadu billah, because he does not accept you to be good to him. So if you're going to be good to him, to worship him, I'm going to feel you satisfied. Please don't misguide me. He's not going to work with him. Okay? So he wants your destruction from the beginning he made this oath to adam alayhi salam ya bani adam la yaftinannakum ash-shaytan oh son of adam let the shaytan not to put you in fitra that means to put you on bad track kama akhraja abawaykum min al-jannah just like he expelled your parents adam and hawa from paradise inna shaytan lakum adu fattakhiduhu aduwa shaytan is for you as an enemy so take him as an enemy he called his people, his followers, to be from the dwellers of the helper. Do you take them as to be awliya, close friends to you, part beside me, and he is an enemy for you? What a bad companion, and you a bad exchange here. What a bad equation that you have had. So you're having his shaitan to be your friend. So this shaytan also is so dangerous because he could see us and we can't see him. Yeah, He sees you, all him and a jinn like him, where you can't see them. So you, they could see you and you can't see them. And also he is running in the veins of the son of Adam. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Yajri min bni Adam majra al uruqi fi dam. He straight runs in the son of Adam just like the blood runs into the veins of the human being. Also, shaytan, uh, you could add to his danger, that he is always present in everything that you do. When you eat, when you drink, when you sleep, when you come inside the house, when you come to the masjid, when you're about to pray, when you are in the prayer, when you are about to intercourse, when you go to the toilet, come out of the toilet, he's always there. Every time you do, when you look at something good, he's always there. Shaytan is present on everything that you do. Inna shaytan, somebody said, he will be present when it comes to some of you in everything that you do. Until he comes as well when he's come to your food. So he wants to share you with your food, the food. He wants to share you with the, even the children when you make intercourse. He wants to share you with the drink. He wants to share you with the sleep. He wants everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was saying to the shaytan, you go hell to, to hell, Shaitan, for you are in hell, and the ones who follow you, this is your recompense, Jaza'an Mawfura, the correct uh, uh, punishment, and inshallah, it will be satisfied punishment. Come on, Shaitan, Allah will challenge you. Try to go and call him with your cry, with your whispering, with, the, with your sound, with your voice. And also bring unto them the mount and the rajil, all of those. So he will ajlib alayhim bihaylika wa rajilihim. Scholars had said a number of interpretation that this shaytan, as soon as you go to the mount, you don't say bismillah, he's with you. Okay, As soon as you are with your family, he's with you. Huh? So as soon as you want to go to the toilet, he's with you. 
is every day with you. And always be a partner with them in the wealth and in their children. And give them promises. But shaitan will always give them deception. Always give them what? Deception. So this jinn shaitan, his enmity and his danger can be seen from the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him number of names. Always when Allah gives number of names for something, that means you have to pay attention. Qiyamah, the resurrection, so many names. So many names in the book of Allah. You have today resurrection. Yawmul Sa'a, Yawmul Talaq, Yawmul Tanad, Yawmul Haqqa, Yawmul Hisab. So many names. Also Iblis came with so many names in the Quran. Allah really called him Iblis. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَ when we have said, when behold, when we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam, فسجدوا. they prostrate إلا إبليس, except for Iblis, that's his name. كان من الجن. He was from the jinn. ففسق عن أمر ربه. He had disobeyed the command of his Lord. يا إبليس ما لك ألا تكون مع الساجين. Allah is calling him, oh, Iblis, why make you not to be among those angels who had prostrated? So Iblis. The name of his has a meaning, and the meaning synchronizes with his actions. As Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, Iblis, Allah. Allah makes him to be fully uh, encompassed with this, and that is not having any good, no good. So Allah will have emptied him from good, ablasahu min al khair, he had emptied him from the good, and also he had made him a shaitan, and shaitan. Uh, 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 and also, uh, he was made shaitan as a punishment for the ones who sins against him. So, Iblis, billah, he is from the one who is like is in despair from the mercy of Allah. He's the one who is empty from the uh, obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. So, his name synchronizes with his actions. That's why he's got the name Iblis. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, said, Allah Azza wa Jal, he called shaitan Iblis because he had... Uh, in, in this it was in despair from the mercy of Allah because he didn't want to repent to Allah he just gave him give me uh, respite until they uh, the day of resurrection so he's immortal until the day of resurrection also his name is shaitan in the shaitan lakum adu adu shaitan is for you an enemy so take him an enemy Allah also he said shaitan kafura and shaitan was to his lord as a denier for his mercy denier for his favors do not follow the steps of the shaitan. Too many verses. Allah called uh, this name shaitan in the Quran, as the scholars they said, 88 times. There's no significance about the number 88, but he had named him shaitan 88 times. Why? In order to warn him against the shaitan, and in order as well to call him off not to follow the steps of the shaitan because he's calling them to this severe punishment. Shaitan. Okay, he is every person who had got closer to the sharp and called to the sharp. Sharp means the evil. And also he is every name for every person is away from the khayr, away from the good, and calling for the people or warning the people from the khayr. So that is why getting closer from the evil and getting far away from the khayr is the meaning that synchronizes with what the shaitan does, the enemy of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said to us that he had made the shaitan as far as from uh, far away as far from the good things and calling to the good and he who reads the book of allah azza wa jal he will see that iblis may allah curse him calls the people to every evil and he uh, basically stopped them from every good but actually not only that as the prophet said he said Qal, ibn ibn Adam he had sat in all the paths that lead to paradise uh, he sat. Sat means like you sit with your buttock. And you are basically making sure that there's nobody's going to pass by you. So Allah the Messenger, he said, Inna shaytana qa'ada bani adam atruqa. Shaytan came to the path where they go to paradise and he sat there to make sure that you're not going to pass by him. You're not going to go to Jannah. So this is what the shaytan did. And Allah he said, Qala Allah spoke about what Iblis he said to him. Because you have misled me, O Lord, I'm going to sit in their straight path. I'm not going to come to them. From their before, from in front. I mean, from the back. I mean, from the right. And from the left. Most of them, you will not find them grateful to you. So, this is how the shaitan wants us to be the party of the hellfire. Third name, At Tahut. 
Abba so many scholars, he said, everything which is worship beside Allah. And number one is shaitan. Most of the ones who worship beside Allah, double shaitan, Iblis himself. So Allah he said, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ He who does this, believe in the taagut, وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُوَّةِ الْوِفْقَى And believes in Allah, he had held, had held with the strongest knot of iman. This shaitan means, this taagut means, sorry, is the shaitan is Iblis. As a number of scholars had said. And also Allah he said, Allah waliyu ladina amanu, yukhrijuhu min al-dhulmati al-nur, wal ladina kafaru awliyahum al-tah. Disbelievers, their awliya, their leaders are the taagut. So taagut is another name as well for Iblis. Ibn Jarir, he said, yuqatiluna fi sabiri al-taagut, means taagut, ta'atu al-shaytan, to obey the shaytan, to obey the Iblis, and also to go to his path. And follow his methodology and the one who had made it beside the methodology of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the word taghut here, if we look at the Quran, we found that it had about eight times been mentioned in the Quran. So shaitan is 88 times. Iblis, uh, about two times, is it? Iblis. Okay. And uh, and the um, this one, it's not really that much of a difference. I mean, and, eight, and eight times for the word taghut. Um our Sheikh Muhammad Lamin Shirkiti Rahimahullah, he says that every ta everything be worship beside Allah is taghut. And the biggest portion goes to shaitan, to Iblis. Didn't I give you my word, my covenant upon you? That don't worship the shaitan and worship me. So those who are the shayateen, those are who the shayateen and the taghut. Um, coming now, to the fourth name, Al Gharur. Al Gharur. Allah he said, In the Allah Haq, verily Allah's promise is true. Don't be deceived by the dunya's life. And let the shaitan gharur to deceive you as well. Ya you are nas, O people, in the Allah Haq. The promise of Allah is true. This is Surah Fatah, the other one is Surah Luqman. Also, Allah Jalil said in Surah Al-Hadid, وَيُنَادُنَهُمْ أَلَمْ تَكُمْ مَعَكُمْ أَلَمْ نَكُمْ مَعَكُمْ And the hypocrites will call them, aren't we with you? قَالُوا بَلَا وَلَكِنَّكُمْ فَتَنْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ But yes, you were with us, but you were in the fitna. You were not followers the Imam. وَتَرَبَّصْتُمْ وَارْتَبْتُمْ وَغَرَّبْتُمُ الْأَمَنَيْ And you were waiting for the moment to make the Muslim to be defeated. And you were having some doubts about Allah. And you've been deceived. And fully fooled by the dunya. Until the matter of Allah came. The resurrection. And the shaitan had deceived you. Gharur has been mentioned. So gharur. In the word gharra. Gharra. Everything that would deceive. Lower the person. Makes him to adapt something. Uh, go with his lust. Basically. This is the gharur. So the gharur. Is what is the lust. But also it has been interpreted to be the shaitan. Iblis himself. Because he is the worst of. The one that can lower you. Sick, fifth one, al wiswas al wiswas the whisperer. And we have three verses being mentioned about whispering. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He said, فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ <coughs> Shaitan had whispered them, whom to son, uh, our father Adam and to Hawa, لِيُبْدِيَ لَهُمَا مَا وُولِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنْ سَوَاتِهِمْ In order to show them what they are being covered from their private parts. They didn't have private parts. Once they have food, they have private parts. So the private parts, <coughs> because of the, and we had this, this because of the waswasa of the shaitan, waswasa whispering. Also Allah Jalla said, "Waswasa ilayhi shaitan, qala Adam, hal aduluk ala taraj al khul." Oh, son of Adam, oh Adam, shall I? He had whispered to him, "Shall I direct you to the tree of immortality, shajarat al khul, wa also wa mulkil laibna, and also dominion which will not perish." Also Surah al Nas. قُلْ عَوْضَ رَبِّ النَّاسِ To the end. قَالْ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ So الوسواس. الوسواس is the shaitan. is Iblis. So شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ The evil of waswas is the evil of shaitan. And Abu Hurairah narrates for us the Prophet وسلم, He said to him إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ Very shaitan. If he had heard the call for the prayer which is the idham, the adham, He will go away and he would be like passing wind. It's a passing wind. Huh? Like a sound of the passing wind of that shaitan when he leaves. Of course, the human being will not hear it. 
Um, if the Mu'addin is finished, he will come to go Nikki Waswasa. If he had heard the Iqama, he will leave and it's like a sound of the passing wind. And then when he comes back, if, he, if the Iqama stops, he will come back to the person while he's praying and he will say, remember this, remember that, remember this, until the person doesn't know how many rak'ah he prayed. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, a man came to the Prophet and he said, Messenger of Allah, verily, there is something goes into myself. Verily, for the heavens to go down uh, onto me, better uh, and easier on me than to say to you what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have in my mind. So something came to him. She said, whispering, came to his mind that I can't dare to say it, Messenger of Allah, to you. I would rather have the heavens to go down on top of me and kill me rather than to say that to you. So the Prophet he said, Allahu Akbar. He was really happy. Allahu Akbar. Did you feel this? Did you see this? Did you hear this? Did you have this whispering? For Barili, this is the Waswata Shaitan. This is Sariqul Iman. This is the clear sign of Iman. Because this Shaitan comes to those people who are what? Believers. The ones who got sincerity. So once you have this, you can't utter it. I've got this, I can't utter it. You got this, you can't utter it. I gotta say it to you now. Now, so if this comes to your mind, you can't even imagine it. That means Alhamdulillah, this Dalika Sariqul Iman. Because as soon as you say, A'udhu Billahi Sami'i Lani Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim Min Hamzi Wa Nafqi Wa Nafqi He'll fly. He goes. So this person who's got the waspas which has been attacked by it and he easily says that فَلْيَسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ He will go away. But if this person has got something wrong mentally wise meaning he thinks that there is maybe true about the statement which has been pushed into his ear the whispering then it is not just enough to say A'udhu Billahi Sami'i Lani We have to sit down with this person and treat him. We have to tell him that, you know, because it will lead him to what? Atheism. It will lead him to deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the shaitan, promises, and also deceives the person, and also whispers for the person, okay, in order to make this son of Adam to come from the light into the darkness, from the iman into the shirk. And there is no way you're going to save yourself from the shaitan except by seeking help from the Almighty. Because you are weak and he's weak. The one who puts his hand in the hand of Allah is the stronger. So once you seek help from the creator, because you're saying, oh Lord, I seek refuge in you from that creature that you created. Okay, I seek refuge in you from the creature that you created, which is the shaitan. Don't fight him like this. You can't fight him like this. He will win because he's more experienced. He's been there for a long, long time. And he's got all sorts of weapons. Everything that he's got there, you know, whatever you, he's got it. So you can't win except by putting your hand in the hands of Allah. It's exactly when the scholar wanted to uh, uh, basically uh, teach his son that, uh, you know, it's an easier way of spelling your enemies. So he was passing him and his son by a dog and the dog barked on him. So he took a stone and threw it at him. The dog started barking again, stopped and barking again. So he said to him, okay, you're gonna what are you gonna do again? He said, I'm gonna stone him again, pelt him with stone. He said, Well, he's gonna bark you again. What are you gonna do? I'll make a stone. So how many stones are you gonna have? So what should I do, Dad? He said, You owner of the dog, take your dog away. Finished. And what Allah Matarul Allah. Shaitan is a creator, a creation from Allah Azza wa Oh Lord, keep this creation of yours away from me. I see refuge in you. I'm putting my hands on you. I am following your command. I've been I commanded to prostrate and I prostrated. I've been commanded to follow Adam alayhi salam, I followed Adam alayhi salam. I've been commanded to follow Muhammad salam, I followed Muhammad salam. Keep me away from this shaitan. That's how you seek refuge in Allah. But if you're going to say to him, all this damn you, all of this, you're going to get bigger and larger. Once Prophet sallallahu had with a companion and this companion, some like a, an animal stepped on his foot. He said, I said, shaitan. Disgrace to the shaitan. He said, the shaitan became like an elephant now. Big. What did I say, Messenger of Allah? He said, billahi Say, oh, Lord, yeah. He will turn into a small ant. Go down. But if you say, Ta'isa, that means, oh, I'm really worth, worth something, he would say the shaitan. That this son of Adam is what? Having some sort of attention to me. He is now he's in a fight with me. He's forgot his link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Iblis, al-shaytan, al-tagut, al-gharur, al-wiswas, all of those. The name of Iblis. Now, is he from the angels or is he from the jinn? Two sayings from the scholars. One, 
is not as strong as the other one. But if somebody said it, that he was from the angel, we can't say that he's the Baal, this mind has been misguided. It's one of the two ishtihads, but the, the second one is more correct. We're going to see the proofs of that. The first saying that Iblis is one of the angels. Why? Because he said, We have commanded, Oh, behold, we commanded the angel to prostrate to Adam, all the prostrated except for Iblis. So Iblis is one of them. Because when we say illa, except for, that exception, it cannot, it is always the default of it, that when you make an exception, you make an exception from the same species, from the same type. Okay? Uh, but in Arabic, we don't. We do have something else, you know. Uh, we do have as well something else. If you have uh, any, a link, like for example, كل الغنم دخل الحضيرة إلا محمد محمد. All the sheep went into the barn except for Muhammad the son of Ahmed. Do we straight away make Muhammad Muhammad a sheep? Do you understand me? In Arabic, it does take it. All the sheep went inside except for what? Muhammad Muhammad doesn't mean Muhammad Muhammad is a sheep like them. So here. It could be Iblis from the angels, but we have other proofs to support the second saying that Iblis is not from the angels. And that is the correct opinion. Allah really said, is another verse. Prostrate to Adam. And then he says, The other one did not mention he can jinn. He was from what? The jinn. He disobeyed the commands of his Lord. So the jinn are different from the angels. And Iblis is the origin of the jinn, just like Adam is the origin of human being. So, Al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he says, Iblis, he will never, was never from the angels, a blink of an eye, no way. And he is the origin of the jinn, just like Adam is the origin of human being. Second proof, the angels, they were created from light, and the jinn was created from the fire. And Iblis himself said to his Lord, you created me from the fire. So it's not going to be from the angels. So Allah Azza wa Jalla, he says, Ana khayru min. Uh, I'm better than, how, why can I prostrate to Why should I prostrate to Adam? I'm better than him. Khalaqtani min nar, you have created me from the fire. And you created him from the mud. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels from the light. Who said that? The Prophet wa sallam. Khuliqatil malaikatu min nur. They were created from the light. And as for the shayateen, the jinn, they were created from the marriage, the top smokeless portion of the fire. And Adam was created from what is being described to you, which is from the mud, from the clay. Allah said, Allah created the jinn from the top smokeless portion of the fire. So we have a difference between the creation of the angels and the creation of Iblis or the Shayateen. So that makes him is not from the angels. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made the angels are to be infallible. They don't make mistakes. Like they don't make mistakes and they don't commit kufr or shirk. Allah azza wa jal had made the angels to be sinless. As for Iblis, he had made the big sin, which we had. He did not obey this command of Allah azza wa jal. Allah he said about the angel, He will never disobey Allah in anything that he command them. And they will do what they've been commanded. And also, as he said, They will never precede him with any saying. The angel will never precede Allah. And they will all the time implement the command of Allah. Also, Allah said, they, work, they fear Allah from above them and they do what they're being commanded. This is also from the about the angels. As for the Iblis, he chose. Fourth reason as well is that Iblis has offsprings. Angels, they don't. They don't have durriya. They don't have wives. They don't have uh, women. They don't have females and males. They're angels. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, about Iblis, are you going to take him and his offsprings are to be your awliya, close friends, minduni, beside me, and they are your enemies. So this is a very clear text from Allah to say that the shayateen, Iblis, has offspring. They were wives and children. As for the angels, Allah Azza wa Jal had said about those people, who describe the angels are to be females, are they're making a blaspheme. So they don't have any children. 
al malaikat al ladina hum abiyadur ibadur rahman and they have made the angels whom they are the slaves of Allah. What? That they are, they are, they are uh, uh, females. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he disgraced them with that saying. Also, the angels are messengers. Iblis is not a messenger. So Allah he said, Ja'il al-malaikata rusula. He had made, or Ja'il al-malaikati rusula. He is making the angels out to be what? Messengers and prophets. So the messengers, so the prophets. Messengers. Messenger that means rasul. To convey the message to the prophet. And Allah Azza wa Jal had made his messengers to be infallible. So they have to be infallible angels. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, Allah knows where he's going to put his message and his prophethood in. So an Iblis is not infallible because he had made the big major sin. He did not prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the right and correct saying is that Iblis, he was imitating the angels at the beginning. Until Allah created Adam, and that's when he, the jealousy, the envy took place in his heart, and that's why he decided not to obey Allah Azza wa Jal when he commands all the angels along with them Iblis, because he was in his image taking the image of angels, but inside he's a jinn. Inside he's a jinn. Once he disobeyed, he became from the shaitan. He is the shaitan, the akbar, big shaitan. From him, all shaitan descends. So, the jinn is different from the angel, created differently. They have offsprings, but definitely Iblis is not from the angels. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. By this, alhamdulillah, we came to the end of the leader of the leaders of the Hellfire. Inshallah, in two weeks' time, we'll talk about some other leaders like Fir'aun, Haman, and Qarun, and Ubayn Khalaf. Those are the people whom Allah Adil spoke about them in the Quran, spoke about Fir'aun, spoke about Haman, spoke about Qarun. Those are a'immah, they are leaders, imams in the helfa, calling and they call the people in the helfa. So to that time, inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put, put us upon the haqq and affirm us upon the haqq. If you have any question regarding what we heard or anything that you want to know, if I have an answer, I will tell you. Otherwise, I will say Allah ta'ala alam. So if you have any questions, please, jazakumullah khair. Tadam. You mentioned about uh, Iblis being the first. Okay, I mentioned about Iblis being the first. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, when I have my glasses on, I would like to, brothers, to come closer. Jazakumullah khair. We've got good numbers here. But I would like the barakah to come in. Jazakumullah khair. Everybody come full closer. So I could hear you as well. Jazakumullah khair. Allah yaqbuk. Allah yaqbuk. Fadal. You mentioned about uh, how Iblis is to the jinns the way the human, the, the way Adam. Basically but I mentioned that Adam is like he is the asr, the origin for the, the human being. And Iblis is the origin of the the jinn. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the malaika, he's creating Khalifa uh, Salam, and they said, And um, so at that time, wasn't Iblis part of the circle of the angels? No, no. No, he was not. Because, you know, the jinn, they have the good ones and the bad ones. From the good ones was Iblis at that time. So when the angel said, when you're going to put the people who are going to be running the earth and governing the earth are the ones who are shedding the blood and spreading mischief, is the ones from the bad of the jinn. So the jinn, they haven't got the option like the angels to do bad. or well, the jinn they have. The angels, they don't have options. The jinn they have. They could choose right or wrong. And Iblis is one of the righteous people. The righteous ones at that time, he was a righteous person. So when all the angels spoke about, spoke about the bad jinn who had spread most corrupt mischief in the land and corruption. And were they from him? Oh yes, they're from him. Mm -hmm. Because the son of Adam, you see, you are from Adam. Adam is good or bad? Adam, but the criminals are from Adam as well. <laughs> Do you understand me? So from Iblis, there's good and bad. And from Adam, there's good and bad. Adam. But Adam, alhamdulillah, he's a prophet. He stayed there, good. But Iblis... He's made himself badly thrown because he's an envy. But remember, that's not one saying. We have difference even as well regarding is Iblis one of the jinn or the origin of the jinn? That's a difference as well. Talked about and now, we have established the fact that Iblis is not from the angels. That's not. But Iblis is he the origin of the jinn or is part of the jinn? That's another dispute as well among the scholars. Okay, I could say that, I could say to you, that I am inclined to say that Iblis is not the origin of the jinn. He is one of the jinn. So the jinn is another species. But he could be 
the the the, the origin of the shayateen or the the one the head of the shayateen which are that they will not uh, they will not uh, basically embrace Islam. So from the jinn, there are still, from the jinn can embrace Islam. And some can be disbelievers as well. But the shayateen, their madda, their species from where they migrated, is actually bad. They will never go to the deen. That's why Allah really said, give up to call Iblis to haq. Stop saying, Iblis, I will worship you. Please look after me. I mean, you can't, you can't do that because he's going to be your enemy. So there are ones, maybe these are the ones who are in their origin, and that is the evil shayateen, not the one can take evil kuffar. So there is jinn who are kuffar and jinn which are Muslims. Those jinn and kuffar and Muslims, Allah A'lam, how do they have da'wah amongst them? Is there a jinn salih who make da'wah to the jinn kafir? Allah A'lam. But kunna tara'iqa qidada. Allah just said that they were different parts. They have some of them good, some of them bad, so they could, but there are shayateen like Iblis. This give up to go and call them to the haq because they're going to be staying kuffar. Okay, these are the ones whom Iblis sent them. Go, they can report, go, they can report. None of them came back. Oh, by the way, such and such you've sent to Mr. Iblis, oh, Iblis, but they didn't come back. Why he, he's being guided by such and such? Angel. There is no such thing. They all of them come back to him, so they are shayateen are going to die as shayateen. Whereas the other jinn. They could be like us, embrace Islam, leave Islam, come to the Haq, leave the Haq. Okay, Allah. As I said, it's controversial. Now, yeah, um, you know that every person has a shaitan, and you mentioned the soldiers of shaitan. So, the person who has every person has a shaitan. Is that a soul? Are we referring to a soul? So, oh, it's a good example here when you said that every person has a kareem. So, this kareem. No way you're going to give him da'wah. So, the, I mean, look, the best of people on the earth after the prophets is Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is got a Karim. Karim shaitan. Abu Bakr, he could be the best da'ya to this Karim, but this Karim did not embrace Islam. Shina Sami, he's always calling Abu Bakr to what? To disbelieve. Except for the Karim of Muhammad sallallahu There's two narrations here. Either he is safe from him, the prophet of Allah, that's most likely. Oh, because another narration he says Aslam. Aslam means what? He had embraced Islam. If it's Aslam, it brings us a problem here. I mean, there are some shayateen can embrace Islam. So this coming for us, it does not embrace Islam. He's going to be all the time cooperating with the shayateen, cooperating with the magicians, cooperating with the sorcerers. He's the one that when the sorcerer cooperates with his shaitan and he wants to get news about you, this shaitan of his, of the sorcerer, will link himself to your qareen. Whatever Karim, you know, knows about you, he will tell him. And the Karim knows everything goes outwardly. All the things he's saying outwardly. Inside, he doesn't know. What goes inside your mind, your heart doesn't know. It's only Allah. But outside, he knows. Where did you put this thing? Where did you take this thing from? Where did you, how many words you swore? How many, he knows, this Karim. And he's willing to cooperate whenever there is an atmosphere, circumstances is there present. There's no other curse of Allah. When you have the care of Allah, this Karim is really like having a big noise. He can't hear what you're saying. He can't cooperate. But if there isn't, you are vulnerable, the care of Allah is not there, he might start sending, you know, news to the other sorcerers to manipulate, you know, and do whatever they want with you. Okay? Now, so the, your question regarding this question, I would say, yes, every person has a Karim that would lead him and ask him to go to the hellfire. Is that what you ask him? Yeah. Is that the soldier from shaitan? He's a soldier from shaitan. Allah Azza wa Jal had made a kareem. Okay? To those, even to the prophets. But the kareem of the prophet Muhammad is safe from him. Now. Tawdun. So you know, um, Sheikh, you said about how um, when someone is a kareem, they don't understand. Irrespective of whether you can start with it, they not listen, etc. Yeah. Um, you know, in and that in terms of like when it comes to giving that or referring to that aspect, would you, is that still applies to humans as well? That there are those that no, can... doesn't apply to the human, but you see, you have to, you have to understand as well when the first that person disbelieves. And he goes away from the haqq and he starts calling for the battle, 
He's called also Shaitan. But he's not the Iblis. Do you understand that? So we have Shayateen from the Ins, from mankind, and we have Shayateen from what? The Jinn. Now, when we say the Shayateen from the Jinn, it includes both types. The Shaitan, which you could never call him to the Hat, and the Kafir Jinn, the one who disbelieved from the Jinn, the one who might embrace Islam, who also Shayateen. Okay? So Shayateen al Ins, Shayateen al Jinn. That means every person, Shayateen is from Shatana. The word Shatana means. Went away from the haqq. Shaitana. That's the word shaitan. So it's not iblis here. The shaitan is every person who calls to the bathroom. Like tawhut. Okay, this tawagheed, we could embrace Islam. Some people was tawagheed and became Muslims, mashallah. Now, the the tawhut, he was, for example, the, the king of Abyssinia. Tawhut and then became a Muslim. Now. Zakallah. Tadalia Faisal. Do you have a question? Sheikh Tadal. Um, There's some brothers who are doing Rukia. Yeah. Higher in places. What's the question? Is that permissible to do Rukia? Yeah? It is permissible and it is recommended to make Rukia. Yeah? Is it permissible to hire places for the Rukia? Yeah? No problem because doing Rukia yeah in the house, maybe, and I bring you the police, especially if this person is going to shout and the neighbors are going to be you know, calling the police because of shouting. But maybe you're asking now, this phenomena, which is hiring a place and making this Rukia more expensive, uh, more expensive than I don't know what to say any, any more expensive than anything that you think about, even go to go to the cinema cheaper to go to them more expensive than seeing a consultant huh? to see a consultant is cheaper. But yeah, that's what I wanted more cheaper than seeing a doctor consultant you see a consultant, maybe you're going to need maybe 100 pounds, even a, a lawyer. They're asking you 500 pounds. He will tell you, I'll read you Baqarah, Akhi Wadi Imran. And I'll give you uh, an anfad for free. <laughs> on top of that. I'll I'll give you that on top of that. Yeah, what do you want? I'm going to be 200 pounds. Uh, I'm not going to read the Baqarah for 200 pounds. I can't read the Baqarah. Half of it. Look at that. This is maybe the Sheikh is talking about the Imam. Allah understand. Khwani, the story that these people depend upon is in Sahih al Bukhari. And it was mentioned in other books about Abu Sayyid al Khudri. Abu Sayyid al Khudri was not mentioned in Sahih al Bukhari, but mentioned other hadith to say this Abu Sayyid al Khudri. The him and other companions. They were going in a journey and they went to a village. They asked for their hospitality. Hospitality means that when I am your guest, it's incumbent upon me, upon you, to look after me for three days. Incumbent. If you can't cater me in your house, go and lend me a hotel. And give me everything I want. Food for three days. That's my right upon you. These people, they came and they want to take the right to Qadar. In the middle of nowhere, they don't have as the next anymore. In the middle of the desert. It's only one tribe. So they're looking for these to host them. Refused. Uh, when they refused, they camped away from them. And because they were restarting Quran and Deen and they were you know, pious people, their master of that village had been stung. Okay? So because of that, their master stung by a poisonous animal, scorpion. They thought maybe that these people with their incantation, Rukia, saying words, they might help our master. So they came and asked. Because they given their help, they didn't give the hospitality. Yes, I was it. Was it off all the time? No, no, no. Just now. Because they, uh, okay, because the sister's downstairs, maybe. So because of uh, their hospitality was not being given to them, they wanted to, you know, basically to teach them a lesson. We will not give you. Or we can't, uh, Rocky, I'll tell you, you know, give us something of hospitality. So they gave them. And they promised, we'll give you. They gave them even more to the 30 sheep. Allah. So he was reciting Al, -Al Fatiha seven times on the person and rubbing Fatiha, rubbing. And then the master was mashallah. So they gave them not just what they maybe the promised them, they gave him 30 sheaves a lot. They, out of their, I could say, uh, uh, very careful uh, to approach this, they were not really just like, oh, let's, let's go and slaughter them, it's ours, yours, and this is one is yours. So we're going to touch them. We're going to ask the Prophet, is this halal or not? 
So they went to the proctor. They didn't, didn't ask for 30 sheep, Yaqwani. It's not like this Raki, 500 first, show me, and then I'll stop recycling. They didn't ask for that. They didn't ask for 30. They didn't give me 30. And as I said, if they were given their hospitality, they would never ask for that. So Prophet ﷺ, he said, give me my share. Meaning it's halal. You can take a share. Uh, give me my share. That means halal. Khalas. If I take it, it's halal. But he said to Abu, what made you to know that this is a rocket? <laughs> that means they've been approved. He read it seven times on that person. Al-Fatiha. So in that sense, it's no problem. But these days, as I said, it's become a profession and a job which I don't like for people to take it as a job. Okay? I, don't, I, don't, I like it to be offered like, like we offer the person's shrouding. Uh, shrouding and washing. Imagine you're going to go to the masjid. Brother, I got a, my father died. 100 for washing, 100 for shrouds. I don't understand that. This is supposed to be a service that the community provide. 100 for washing. I don't want him dry wash. I don't want him to be washed. Too much for me to pay. Now these days, 100 and 200 is nothing. You know, the funeral, just before he go to the grave, 600 pounds, 700 pounds. 700 pounds, yeah. Masih will say, 700 pounds. We'll wash him for you, prepare him for you, and then you bring your car. Huh? Well, the great, well, we'll bring you the car, but we can't. The burial, that's depend upon the municipality. So the borough, some of the boroughs 5,000, some boroughs 1,000, some borough 2,000. Depends upon how land, how cheap is the land. Okay. Well, really, it's, it's something is like headache now. So I wouldn't want to be a Muslim to be too pushed, to be pushed a while to cremation. Cheaper. Cremation is not, don't pay nothing. They don't, don't pay anything for cremation. I don't know they, how much peanuts or 300 pounds. pounds. Yeah, but it's better than 5,000 pounds. The funeral, the funeral costs about 10,000 pounds. Of one. So, we, uh, Muslim imagine going to be cremated because of the. So, Muslim should help one another. One. Shouldn't really ask for money for that. Right. Yeah. Um, so you, you know, people commit sin, uh, you've got the option of repentance and the Islam to forgive you or not. Similarly, um, the thought comes to my mind, Iblis, he has vowed that he is going to um, track us in hellfire. hellfire. But can't he also repent later? Not He didn't repent initially, but can't he repent later? No, he can't he... repent later. Because if he wanted to repent, he repented at the beginning. Because he had taken his chance. He said to him, just give me a respite. Because of the, the price of his not repenting, he's been giving him no retirement. Immortality. He does not die. At the beginning, he went, why didn't you prostrate? He didn't want to listen. Because I'm arrogant, so I'm better than him. So here, this shaitan, he could have repented, but he didn't want to repent. He said, just give me one. And not only that, I'm going to mislead all your slaves. So he doesn't want to. He wants. So for the price of immortality, he's been destined to hellfire. He can't repent. Right? Because of the day of resurrection, he will say to himself, I did not have any dominion upon you. I have only called you and you responded. You're not going to help me, I'm not going to help you. I fear my Lord. I fear Allah, the Lord of the I fear Allah. He fears Allah, but at the same time, he made his disobedience and he took his chance to repent, but he did not. He wanted immortality. So Allah said, Inna min al -mudari. Okay, you have it. Until the day of resurrection, and then you will be with them. Dakhiri, be Jahannam. Now, type. Have any questions, if any? Fadl, plus before we go to online, Fadl. I'm kind of confused about the stocks of the jinn and the So it leads to the jinn, and the jinn have the option to disobey or disobey, and then you have the shayatin who says they can't. They they can never be on behalf of the Do they have the option? Or why do we say that? Okay, as I said, this is all of it ishtihari, but that means controversial. Number one, I said, I'm going to repeat it again. We have established now we have jinn and human being because Allah did his minal jinnati wa nasi ajma'in. Jinn and human. So we, did you understand that? We have to understand this because we don't want to be like these Qadianians. They don't believe in jinn. Okay? We are Muslims. We believe in jinn. One who doesn't believe in jinn is a kafir. He's a jinn. And those jinn, they're called 
the Qur'an is the ones who Allah had sent the messages to. So the prophets have been sent to human beings and jinn. So when they have heard, inna sami'na Qur'anan ajaba, Qur'an is yahdi ila rush, calling people to the guidance. So we have believed in it. So we have this jinn who are, can embrace Islam. Now, the ones who disbelieve from mankind and jinn go to the bad way, we call them also shaitan. From human being and from what? Jinn. The one who disbelieves and denies the haqq. We call them shaitan. Now, this is shaitan is in general, the one who had gone away from the haqq. Okay? Now we come into Iblis. Iblis, is he from the angels or is he from the jinn? That jinn, which is the one that can embrace Islam or not embrace Islam. Do you understand me now? All right. So we establish now that the correct opinion, he is not from the Malaika, the angels. He's from the jinn. Now we come in now. Is Iblis himself that is he from the jinn or is he the origin of the jinn? We the debatable as well. Some of they say no, he is from the jinn, not the origin of the jinn. Now coming now to the other the last issue, which is the one asking about. This jinn, like Iblis, who had after disobeyed Allah and he does not gonna go to paradise, he became a disbeliever, not gonna be nothing. Now he's got shayateen who send them all over the place. The one who sends them all over the place, are they from him? He's their origin. That means they will not believe. That's it. So he's sending shayateen and they were going to come back shayateen. None of them are going to say, bye-bye, I knew the haq, I'm going to come back to you. That's another debatable issue. So if we say that, yes, he's the origin of the evil shaytan who does not have haq. That's another ishtihadi matter. It's not any like the... Uh, but you need to know that there's a human being in this jinn. There's Kafir jinn, there's Muslim jinn. Okay? But other issues are ishtihadi. But most the scholars. So we have now shayateen, jinn kuffar, Muslim jinn. And we have shayateen jinn that will never ever embrace Islam, which are followers of Iblis. Zakallah khair. Kabah, muna khair suar. Second. I will come to you. Faisal, quickly, please. Yeah, um, Sheikh, um, the Imam, he led the prayer, but um, he was not able to stand nor sit on the, on the floor. So he sat on the chair for the whole prayer. He sat on a chair. What should we do? Stand or sit? Is this happened? Yeah, Faisal, we tried to find a scenario. No, no, this 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 happened, um, Sheikh, with my son. He let us, and um, he he couldn't stand. So <laughs> oh, it was with my family. <laughs> my son, he let us. His son is trying to explore all sorts of positions, so I could know the answer. <laughs> right, right. So why didn't he stand up? He, he can't stand up. No, he had an injury to his leg, and he, and he couldn't prostrate. sit on the floor. And he cannot also. prostrate. He cannot prostrate as well. Yes. Um. He he could prostrate, but he has to sit on the um, on the yeah yes he couldn't do ruku he could do ruku but he couldn't prostrate correct yes all right because he couldn't prostrate he can't have a chair you know that yeah right. no he couldn't prostrate chair because if you, can't prostrate, if you could prostrate it one you can't sit on the chair just sit on the floor because you're gonna lose a big pillar which is a sujood right so he sits mm -hmm. on the chair so I'm not gonna ask you do you think that the people who are like yourself or the people in the masjid they're going to bring chairs and sit chairs as well, all of them behind the imam or what? No, so we, we all sat behind him, Sheikh. That day we all sat behind him. What, with a chair? No, 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 on the floor, on the floor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That we need to do to sit yeah, on the floor. That's the correct opinion. So we can't sit on the chair. But if he stood up while he's using the chair, then you pray standing yes, up. Allah. Is that understood? If Meaning if he started takbir to the haram standing, right? Started to takbir to the haram and made ruku standing. If somebody's talking while I'm talking, Hudayfa, Yaqi, Habida. Can you switch off the phone, please? Yes. So the person he's prostrate, he had the, sorry, he made qiyam, the fatih, and ruku while he's in qiyam. When it came to prostration, he sat on the chair, then the people would start praying standing up, okay? But you totally telling me now there's a specific scenario with this person sitting on the chair while he's standing up, he's always on the chair. He does not stand up. Then we pray behind him sitting down. Okay? Thank you, Shaq. Shazakallah khairan.
Sheikh, what is the ruling? Uh, of, by the uh, way, having... I would not lead. Make if Sheikh Abdul Qadir was in this position, God forbid, don't make it to lead. You look at chaos. Yeah, exactly. Find another recycle, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Don't be the philosophy man here. Just like a little shit. Finally, yeah. Masoud. Chef, what is the ruling of having your forehead uh, covered while you making sujood like with the peak head or uh, like winter head? Is it is it is it permissible or it has to be uncovered? I understand the question. You mean covered like this? Like this? Yeah, with the peak head. Yeah, peak head. Seek, seek, seek. Yeah, we have. No problem, Mahi. No problem. As long as this hat is not like a sponge. Is it a sponge? They can't really no, use it. Like a... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell you what, imagine like you have a gloves, you know, the boxing gloves, and this is the way the top of the head. That is not going to be <laughs> subtly, that's not right. But this one is no problem. And this is by the way, the Shafi'i, they say it's not, it's not allowed. You have to really expose your forehead, which is not correct. So imagine like the carpet. So the carpet is on the floor. So stick the carpet on your face. The same thing. You understand on the floor. Okay. So we say it is. But the scholars, they they, they have more explanation than mine. Mine is simple. They say that if the thing that you put in your head is moving with the prayer while you're moving, or is not moving. But we say it is correct. Wallahu alam. No, no problem. As long as it is not a big thing that you can't settle your head. Fadal ya zuhra. Assalamu alaikum. Um, sometimes if somebody is upset with someone else or with a child, they might call them a shaitan. Is that correct? Right. No, I wouldn't really uh, call a child shaitan because the shaitan yani, is no good. You could call him a monkey jumping up and down. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not a shaitan. Uh, but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam, he saw a woman who was shaking her head. For the music, he says, Shaitana. Shaitana. Because the Shaitan is trying to move the head of that person. Okay? So, uh, but not children. Children, because you don't want to see Shaitan. You say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the word for it in English, uh, cheeky is a cheeky? Yeah, cheeky, monkey. Che cheeky monkey. Yeah, that's the word. Cheeky monkey. See? That's a good one. Cheeky monkey. Yeah, he makes like, like he jumps up and down. Cheeky cat. Whatever. But don't cheeky pig, because some animals are no good. Cheeky dog. What's this? Dogs, pigs, you don't want to be called snakes. Hold it, you don't want to be a snake. Snake, that means you're untrustworthy. <laughs> Something wrong with you, can't, you know, can't trust you. But there are human beings, or that's sorry, the animals that are respected, like lion. Prophet, let me call, he called uh, Hamza, Asadullah, lion, Asadullah. Now, Fadl, Yalla Faizan. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Um, so my question was um, say a person was in a um, major impurity and they didn't know when what? they paid that so that again I can't hear you oh, I said if a person was in a major impurity major impurity they, yes yeah and they didn't um, know and they prayed around about that 45 prayers um, my question is prayers. Yeah, how many days, my how many days is that? sorry how many days? So around like a week. A week. How did he remember a week ago, a week before, that he was not on Tahar? That's the question. You know what I'm um, asking? I think this is the person who's asking, not you, the one who's asking about such things, sometimes maybe having waswasa. Hmm. Shaitan is telling him to go back a week and then start investigating, and then you're going to have a problem. You're going to do this all the time. You know, maybe two weeks ago, I didn't have to repeat my whole two weeks. And after that, I'm going to get fed up. Repeating 45 prayers, 90 prayers. So if a person is not sure, he should not repeat anything. Okay? One week is too much. Can't remember some, some two uh, last week. Okay? I can't remember what I had last night for dinner. Let me just think about it before I answer you the question. I can't. It's a week. It's a lot. But if he's 100%, he's not going to what's what's that? He... Repeats all the prayers, no problem. Repeats him, and every time uh, uh, he is having time. He doesn't have to exalt himself, but he repeats him. No problem. But as I said, be careful from the words of the shaitan. Hafidah. 
Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, sorry about earlier. I was using my mum's phone. That's uh, that's why I was no using you. Um, I just wanted to ask you. You see, at my local mosque, um, I attended the Islamic talk about two times now, and at the end of the talks, they start taking names of people on the list, like to do khuruj. I just wanted oh, to know what the ruling of that is because I heard this uh, bid'ah. Right, right. So the, the people who are doing this, they call Jamaat Tabligh. Jamaat Tabligh, I, I have explained about them, I think, in this class a long time ago. But in general, I'm not going to, because it's considered another talk, to be talks, to be talks. You see, they're recording them for what? Recording them for to go with them and to do what? Are they learning anything? No. They're just getting together, cooking food together, sitting together, and making sometimes Sufi adkar together. And then they dare them even to give a reminder to the people. Yet they just joined. They joined the deen just for the first time. So they come. Remember, Ad sort of talked before. He doesn't have any knowledge. And then he starts on top of the people standing up. By the way, this is the deen. And he has got no, 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 no knowledge. It's like a doctor who's not a doctor. So the doctor is not a doctor. He's going to kill people with his medicine because he's not a doctor. So we tell these people, Akhwani, sit down and learn your deen. A person likes to travel. You like to leave your home, leave your wife and children, maybe their headaches, to leave your maybe father and mother because of your headaches. And you want to have a trip journey, especially if it's uh, plain or remember. You like this, don't you? You love it. So I would love to have journeys all the time. But journeys for what? If you're going on a journey to a scholar to learn, no problem. But you're not. You're going with a bunch of ignorance huh, to learn ignorance. So you're ignorant with ignorance, what are you going to do? So ignorant plus ignorance and make a person who's not ignorant. It's ignorance double. So these people, they need to know that this is not the way that the Prophet taught the Islam. And nor it is that these people come up with these numbers. That you have to go three days at least a month, okay? Or you have to come out, uh, I can't remember, it's four months in the whole time of your life. And what, what, is, the, what is the proof of four months? Al-fasihu fil ardi arba'ata'ashur. Go on, tour in the land for four months. This is to do with the Prophet Allah when he gave this time for the kuffar as a, between the covenants. But it's not for you to go and use this verse to go out for four months. SubhanAllah. So they say, for example, and, and it's three days and one week in the year. I can't remember this, this numbers there. And then they call to the Sifat al Sit, the six attributes. They swapped the Arkan al Iman al Sitta, the pillars, the pillars of Iman, to something I, I don't know. Al Khuruj, one of them, to come out. He said. So part of the deen is saying that the knowledge and the deen cannot come into you until you make Khuruj. That's what they're trying to make the people think. You will never gain the proper deen until you go make khuruj. If you make khuruj, what? To do what? Learn ignorance? If I, if you are knowledgeable, you tour the land and you give talks here and talks here. But if you are ignorant, coming with a bunch of ignorance, you're going to learn nothing. You're going to learn the wrong things. You're going to learn bid'ah. So for them, they don't really care about for fixing the prayer. When they pray, they don't pray the same. Each one prays his own prayer. Because none of them knows that correct prayer. None of them. None of them comes in, by the way, brother, the prayer is wrong. They don't teach themselves like this. Aqidah wise, you could find the Ash'ari with the Sufi, with the one who is Mahal Sunnah, with the one who doesn't know anything, go together. They don't know anything. And then they read so called Riyadh al Salihin or Tabligh in Isab in some of the countries, depending upon which country. And the way they read it, they don't even read it properly because they haven't learned to read it properly. This is not the way, Ikhwani. I know that some of them they have got good intention, but good intention in order for it to be rewarded has to have also. The good following of the Prophet. If you don't follow the Prophet of Allah, your deeds are cancelled. It's not going to be accepted. Follow the Prophet of Allah. So, I don't think I As I said, I talked about them before. I don't want to go a lot in that. I'm trying to bring them back. I don't want them to, to, to say some words here to push them away from us. Try to say to them, this is not the right way. Because I, if I'm going to say, I, I know them very well. I know them very, very well. I've lived with them for a long, long time. I, I've saw them even in, in Pakistan. I saw them in Rawalband. How do they do? Yeah, and I saw these people. So I, I know that some of them are genuine. They're nice. But they are misguided with the haq. It's not the haq the way. So we're trying to say that this is not correct. 
As soon as he becomes like then he puts this turban, one end at the back, and uh, he's totally brainwashed. Totally brainwashed. He doesn't come to the the common understanding of the people. I'm not joking here. They, they don't really understand like you understand. You're talking to him, he's brainwashed. He doesn't really understand. He doesn't focus with you because he, he, it goes with his wounds and desire. You know, I'll give you an example. If you, for example, see in the desert uh, a footstep in the desert on the sand, uh, footprint, what comes to your mind in the desert? Somebody who's there. It doesn't come to the mind of that person who's a follower of them. He would say, Akhim, you can't do this. This you Don't do rape. It could be a helicopter with long sticks at the end of like a foot. They will start the printing. He goes to that thinking. Do you understand me? Don't have riba. It's a footprint. There's a human being. No, no, no. no. Helicopter. <laughs> Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Sheikh, do we have a good Kareen and a bad Kareen? One on the right, one on the left? Bad so Kareen? And a... <laughs> a good <laughs> Kareen and a bad Kareen. <laughs> Did you hear it, Kareen? Some people hear it, yes, had bad curry and uh, good curry. And I need to have curry tonight, inshallah. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. <laughs> bad curry. <laughs> <laughs> but what bad Karim, yeah? Bad Karim. Well, let me hear it, bad Karim, as I Allah. Good, no, do we have a, a good Karim on the right shoulder and a bad Karim on the left shoulder, like in the cartoon? No, we don't have that. <laughs> we have uh, the Karim. Uh, the Karim the the is always bad. The Karim is always bad. Wallahu ta'ala alam. As for the angels, we have good angels, one on the right, one on the left. One write the good deeds, and a good angel write the bad deeds. It's not a bad angel. <laughs> Allah made him hafala. So don't think that he's a bad angel writing me the bad deeds. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa subhanakallah bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Zakhullah khan. What is carrying